Hey, it's me, GV, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Let's Play The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Special Edition. This is part 166. That is correct. Your eyes do not mistake you. We have done 166 episodes, including this one. Up until this point, I remember way back when a lot of people were like, you can't do a 100% playthrough of The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, and, and thus, later on, a special edition because it's coming out, although when I started the series, no one knew it was coming out. It would have been nice to know that it was is coming out because then I could have just waited. But that's okay. <clears throat> that's okay. This series served a purpose as to uh, maybe show the transition in between the two games. And uh, totally, that was my original intention. Absolutely and, and wholeheartedly. And no one can take that away from me. Not you, not anyone, not even my mom. I don't think my mom watches my... I don't even think she knows how to watch a, watch one of my videos. She knows how to watch a YouTube video. I don't want to paint her in that light. But I don't think she uh, knows even how to find me anymore. Because once I started this channel way back when, I nonstop talked about how great it was doing. Because I was, I was proud of it, you know? And, and I think she just got ev eventually very tired <laughs> of me talking about it. But if you somehow cross this uh, video, Mom... Um, well, hi. Thanks for being a great mom. Okay, guys, we're going to jump right into this. It has been an absolute age since I've uh, recorded this game. Um, I, I used age because I used to read Harry Potter when they first were coming out, you know, when I was a kid. And I remember they always used to say it's been ages. And I was like, doesn't it, doesn't it sound like it's a very long time, like years and years and years and years? But it usually just meant like a, a long time a while so it's been about a week um maybe more because i took a little week vacation so we're gonna jump right back into this let's take a look at the quest that we're doing the fate of the skull the skull have been freed from mirax control and his minion has been destroyed now that storm no longer needs to focus on keeping his people safe he may be able to tell me more about how to find and defeat mirak and adrenoc of course is filled with extreme determination uh you can inject any Undertale reference uh, you want at any point in time. But yes, he's filled with extreme determination to take down Mirak because there can only be one. It's a very Highlander thing, which I've never seen, but I know there can only be one, and that remains true for Adrenok and Mirak. Uh, one of them has to die. Also, we have another stone straight ahead of us, which we will activate, but first, we'll talk weeks. to Storm. Hello, Storm. The air is different. We are safe. Which means you have succeeded. Your people are free. So it is. You have proven yourself an ally to the Skull. And so the Skull shall be allies to you. What do we do now? If you have released the Windstone and broken the hold on my people, perhaps you can do the same for the rest of Solstein. I doubt it will fully stop whatever Mirak is doing, but it may slow his progress. That's not enough. I need to stop Mirak now. I cannot help with that. None here can. You will need the knowledge Mirak himself learned. You will need to learn more about this black book. Tell me more about this book, then. Mirak had this? This does not look like something of the dragon cult. It is a dark thing, unnatural. I would have nothing to do with it. But the dark elf wizard, Neloth. He came to us some time ago, asking about black books. I believe he knows a great deal about them. Perhaps too much. Seek him out to the south. Be cautious, Dragonborn. There is something else at work here. What do you know about Mirak? Much of what was known has been lost to the ages. He was dragonborn, and yet he served the dragons. A priest in their order, highly esteemed and very powerful. Then he turned against them, becoming something they feared. He was defeated long ago, but it seems he was never really destroyed. May darkness never touch you. Alrighty, so we will ask, well, we would have asked Storn 
about more um, about the things that well, well let's let's restart that little line of thinking there because that did not come off as intelligent whatsoever we would have asked Storm about more of the things that he has knowledge about but again I just have to default to Adronach would not care about the skulls or their plight or really anything he just he's just concerned with gaining power and stopping Mirak so yes I did ask and uh, inquire about Mirak because Adronach would look for any information about that particular guy. Regardless, let's take a look at what we have. The Path of Knowledge talked to Neloth. And if you remember, Neloth was the Dark Elf that talked to us uh, way back when we first arrived in... Um, I always want to say Dragonborn, but Solstheim. However, we also have... Oh, where was it? Cleansing the Stones. It is another quest. Great, which means we will do this. I wasn't sure if this uh, was a miscellaneous quest or a main quest. After I destroyed Mirak's control of the Windstone, Storn has asked me to free the remaining sacred stones using my Bend Will Shout. And that's exactly what we will do because each of these is going to give us one little bit of power. Now, as you can see here, though, it's not showing us where to go. Luckily, Solstheim does not have that big of a landmass. Um... It has much less of a, la of, of a land mass than I'm sure all of us players would want it to because we want to just explore forever. Although it has more character, I think, than Far Harbor. I really like the Far Harbor DLC from Fallout 4. But I feel like Soulslime just has a bit more character, and I don't know exactly why. I mean, if we look at it, it looks like we're at any part of... Uh, ooh! Ooh, 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 ooh! Who taught you to talk? You. Hello, me. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> I combined okay and cool together. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, alright. So, this is interesting. This is one of the more interesting side quests that Solstheim has to uh, offer. We have to remember to go back to Thursk Mead Hall. Last time I did this quest, uh, I did not even get a chance to talk to these guys, which are Reichlings. I don't think we've seen them before, and I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation, but I've always called them Reichlings. That's interesting. Okay, cool. But nevertheless, we have bigger fish to fry, and right here we have another stone with some cultists. What do we have in our hands? Close wounds and incinerate? Well, that's fine with me if we deal a decent amount of damage. Okay, some guys are still working on the stone. I need you to stop warding. Ooh, and I also need you to sort of gravitate to my fire blast so I don't look like I suck. Because there's not like a hundred... Oh, wow. There's not like a hundred and sixty-five more episodes of this series that illustrate that, is there? Um, no. How about you be an offering? Oh, I was taunting you. I got I got caught taunting. Uh, okay. I, I, I fell into the classic bad guy motif. I'm sorry about that. I, I should have killed you faster. Okay, anyways, I should not have also used a shout because I realize now we're going to have to wait for our uh, Ben Will shout. But I think we can just literally wait. I'm not sure exactly how long it takes. Probably an hour would have been fine. So, that was useless. But nevertheless, I don't think I have, no I haven't, favorited Ben Will. So let's go ahead and grab that one and then activate this. And yeah, it would be nice to utilize our, oh well, okay, Reichling Warriors. Hopefully you'll fight with me. I know you guys aren't really the most... Uh, charismatic sort, but we have yet another lurker here. We'll summon our boy Thorn. We'll summon our, our boy Spike. We'll summon our sword, which I still don't have a name for, damn it. I was out of town for about a week, so I didn't really have too much time to take a look at the comments and suggestions. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, I just totally forgot. I, I keep forgetting with two things, and it's with the sword... And it's with the, the Thane information. Now, I have forgotten stuff, forgotten to look up stuff in the past, but for some reason, the name of the sword and the Thane information have just eluded me so. Um, and, okay, I, I know I keep saying this, but I promise, after this episode, I will look up the suggestions for the sword. I have seen them. I have seen the suggestions, actually. That's not totally untrue. I have seen a lot of different suggestions for this sword. Uh, but I have to find a couple of the ones that I saw earlier that I really did like. Nevertheless, we're going to put that away, and we're going to search this lurker. Thank you. Necklace of Eminent Smithing. I will take that, and I will take that since we're trying to accrue some gold. And if we activate the Beast Stone, 
Conjure Werebear is added, which is quite interesting because if you have not played this DLC just yet, ladies and gentlemen, you probably were unaware that there are werebears in this DLC. Summons a werebear for 60 seconds wherever the caster is pointing. Single use then must be required at the B-Stone. Reacquired. Okay, now I think we're going to do some exploring because, like I said, um, the landmass of Solstheim is not that expansive. So we should be able to find the remaining stones. We have two more remaining for a total of five, I guess. I think I thought that there was four. We're basically going to pick a direction and hope that we can see a stone icon appearing. Although I think one is probably going to be near uh, Nelof, our newest objective for the main quest. Let's go ahead and activate whatever this is. Oh, I think I remember this. Altar of Thrawn. Yes. Yes, there's something with this particular location, but I don't remember what. Obviously, we have an altar here with a sacrifice. And it looks like they've uh, made a particularly unique dead body here. It looks like the heart has been ripped out. We've got some claw marks and a huge gash on the leg. Pretty gruesome as far as Skyrim bodies usually go. Usually, they're just sort of bloodied with what looks like jam. Raspberry jam. You know what I mean? Okay, let's go this way. Is this Mosling Pass? If this is Mosling Pass, I have an excellent memory. Let's see, I really want it to be... Please be Mosling Pass. Mos Ring Pass! Ooh, which also means there's something up here that we'll probably explore in a... Hi, what's your name? Ow! That's not what you do to friends. Okay. Grab incinerate. I'm gonna incinerate your ass. What do you think about that, Reichling Warrior? I met some nice versions of you guys. Jeez. Oh, and we just saw that they drop Reichling Spears, which are a uh, new item um, in this DLC as well. I, I remember when this DLC was coming out. There were oh, there's a stone. There were reports of uh, there were reports of spears, and people were excited because they thought that. Bethesda was adding spears as a weapon that you could use, like, uh, in Skyrim, or, sorry, in Morwen, which I never utilized when I played Morwen, um, any of the times, pretty much. Ooh, that's good. I think we need to come to Felbathars at some point for the main quest as well. Uh, but yes, people were disappointed to find out that, no, they were just Reichling spears, which you use in arrows, or, or sorry, you use in bows, and they're basically just more hefty and slower to fire with, I, I believe, more damage. Otherwise, what's going to be the point? Okay, here we have yet another stone. Are any of these people going to... Yes, we have a cultist. Okay, so first thing that we're going to do... I forget if uh, Ben Will is still activated. So we're going to grab Ben Will. We're going to activate this. Free everyone. That's going to explode the stone. And we're going to utilize this power before we grab a new one. Uh, where was it? Powers. And conjure werebear. Alright, so let's see what this does. Wait. It shouldn't matter that I... Someone's a werebear. Okay. Is this... Oh, is this... Wait, no, it's activated. Do I have to... Oh, there we go. Okay, I had to wait for the uh, shout cooldown to go down. I didn't think that was the case for powers. But yeah, that's a werebear. And as the name suggests... What? Where are you going? What? Wow, I guess we summoned the most cowardly werebear of all time. Okay. Well, I guess this is on us now. We have a Lurker Sentinel, which I'm not sure uh, if that means that it's stronger or weaker. I would imagine it's, yeah, it seems to be stronger. And also we have a dragon. I guess that's where the Werebear was going. Okay, we need to high board this thing up here because this is going to be kind of tough. So close wounds. Let's get our boys out. And a two. Okay, now let's also grab Ebony Flesh. And then Bound Sword. And lay into the Lurker Sentinel. Which, as you can see, is a pretty strong cookie here. But Ebony Flesh reduces the damage by about half. I guess we don't take too, too much time to, like, look at the enemy's actual attacks. Um, I just sort of glance over those or glaze over those sometimes. So, as you can see, he's got a stomp attack, which, de which deals an area of effect. He's also got these tentacles that come out. Um, which is a part of the motif. We'll see a bit a bit later with these lurkers and uh, who they answer to. Okay, we'll take the necklace and we'll also grab the power because the Conjure Werebear power doesn't seem to be that strong. But then again, he ran away before we could really see. Alright, we've got a new power. And that is the Waters of Life. 
heals everyone close to the caster 300 points. Single use then must be reacquired at the Waterstone. So this one's kind of lame. Just a big area of effect heal. Uh, even though Mirak will take this soul, we'll go ahead and kill this dragon. Gaining some... Um... Okay, let's go ahead and use the Waterstone power. Okay, so yeah, that's, that's kind of lame. The uh, uh, animation isn't even that strong. I should have used it for this guy, but oh well. Sorry, Galfar. What's your name? Gal, how? Galfar. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's head up here. You think you're cool, dragon, for getting up on that perch? I can reach you. Yeah, you're just a base dragon, man. I can totally base tank anything that you have to throw at me. And in this case, it seems that you're throwing fire. Okay, buddy. I don't want this to last too long. In fact, I don't even think I'm going to get a soul from you. So if you could go ahead and land. I really don't want to switch to Dragon Ren, but I will. All right, you're going to stay here. Well, not there. You're going to have to move to, uh, yeah, some ground. Is there any... Uh, I can move, like, a landing spot. I, I can get the landing spot ready for you if you need... Oh, yeah, all the way over there. Okay, in fact, I'm going to go the opposite direction then. All right, so we need the Sunstone. And like I said, it's not showing us where this is. So we'll have to basically try to triangulate its location we've got one here one here one here and one here i think it is in skull territory which means it's probably either here i don't think it's going to oh never mind there it is okay i was thinking that it might be all in the upper half of soul Slime. all right well this is our location so we'll set our destination and the closest thing to it and that's where we need to go by the way tell mithrin to see Neloth. so that's good Again, two birds and one stone. All right, we'll travel back to Thirsk Mead Hall. Which, like I said, we haven't seen too many Reichlings just yet. But they're mainly me. Um, they're not They're not a bunch of good guys, and hopefully I didn't mess that up. Because they're not here anymore. But that's okay. All right, we're going to head in this direction and get our final stone. And thus, getting access to all of the five different powers. Now, I forget what the two, I think, that we've already gotten were. Uh, since it's been quite a while since I've recorded this. What were they? I know they were the Earth Stone. And I feel like the first one that we got was um, was quite good. But maybe we'll take a trip back. Either way, let's head this way. You can see Red Mountain in the distance. Still with all of that smoke, even though it's, it's hazy. Oh, it's ashy over in this direction. Okay, can we see the final stone? Yes, we can. It's got a light emanating from the top. Let's go ahead and destroy it and see what our final power is is going to be. I will preemptively grab Bend Will. And also from my spells, our boys, because these lurkers, as I remembered them to be, and also when you're in the Ashlands to the south, uh, yes, you'll have a lot of Ash spawn spawning. Go figure. Alright, Sunstone, you're mine. You go ahead and summon the guys again. And then get ourselves our sword we have this time and also soul tear yet another lurker this one is just a lurker this time and i don't know because it seems to be taking the same damage maybe even a, a little tiny bit less from the uh other one but it looks like yeah we're definitely taking less damage so the lurker whatever it was called is definitely an upgrade all right let's go ahead and soul tear i don't know where thorn and spike are oh, there they are yeah about time i guess they were letting me have some time with this guy before they moved on in for ones which i guess is a nice little change of pace okay that is completed let's see what we get here sun flare was added and it looked like we were healed i don't think anything healed us around us i don't think anything around us healed us uh interesting okay uh let's go to powers and sun flare a 150 point fiery explosion centered on the caster does more damage to closer target single use than must be reacquired at the sunstone now, I forget exactly, but I think every single one of these you have to reacquire. But it seemed like the first one you may have not. Um, but I don't think that's the case. I think I'm just remembering things incorrectly. So, I like Sunflare. We're hold, we'll hold on to that for like a boss sort of character or a big dragon. Uh, let's go ahead and turn in this. Oh, it's just done. Oh, well, that's lame. Okay, well, that's fine. Uh, talk to Neloth. That's perfect because guess what? Like I said... Neloth is going to be right in front of us. And I really wish it was at a better time in the day. I wish we could hear the cries of a certain creature around here. Okay, I think we have some ash spawn somewhere. Let's go ahead and remove this marker before I go insane. 
yes, we completed the stone quest, and uh, I forget the best one. It seemed like the first couple of ones were better, but I like the sun flare, and we'll utilize that, and maybe we'll switch it. If you must know, I'm trying to get this Ash Guardian spell to work. Now let me concentrate. Besides, shouldn't you be worrying about the damage to the tower? Master Nalot has tasked Alenya with repairing the tower. I am doing this in the lab, where it would be safer for all of us. The, uh, the lab is too small. Also, I need the ashy soil. Master Neloth knows what I'm doing. No need to bother him about it, though. He's quite busy at the moment. It's on your head if something goes wrong. Just let me get back in the No, Ash Guardian. Maybe the book has something. We don't get many visitors. Is there something you need? What is this place? Tell Mithrin. It's the home of Master Neloth. You may have heard of him. He's a famous Telvanni wizard. Are you one of Neloth's apprentices? No. Talvis is his apprentice. I'm his steward. I managed the day-to-day -day affairs of Tel Mithrin. He lives in a giant mushroom? In Morrowind, the Telvanni grow buildings from special fungus spores. Master Neloth grew one here to be his home. Don't ask me how. All right, then. Okay, so we have one of the better set pieces of this DLC, although I wish, like I said, it was in a brighter context. Uh, but super cool. If you play Morrowind, The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind, uh, you'll deal with a lot of these sort of mushroom houses, and you'll also deal with a lot of Telvanni wizards, which can be annoying, and I'm not going to spoil why, but let's just say it's kind of hard to traverse their domiciles. All right, so inside here we have the Telmithran Apothecary. Apothecary. I was thinking I was saying that a little bit wrong. And also over here, it's sort of like a little town, but I believe only three people live here, uh, including Master Neloth. We just need to find a way to get in to see him. And it looks like I was looking at the wrong door because this seems to be the main entrance. Into Tel Mithrin. Okay, and one of the things I love about this DLC is... Oh, hey boys, didn't realize you guys were still here. Uh, well, I, do, I did dual cast you, so I guess that's why you're here for so long. Alright, well, I don't know if you guys are going to know how to do this, but just basically look at the ground and tap A uh, if you want to float... Uh, oh, glitched out a little bit there. So, super cool. I love stuff like this. I love verticality, I guess, in games. And just, can we, like, just... Oh, God, did I just kill myself? Uh, the answer to that question, if you were wondering, is yes, I did, in fact, kill myself. But luckily, autosaves exist. So back up we go. Oh! Thorn uh, was coming up with me. Interesting. Okay. Well, hi there. Where is that ash sucking steward of mine? Verona? You again. Didn't I see you in Raven Rock? I hear you know where to find black books. You refer to the tomes of esoteric knowledge that old Hermaeus Mora has scattered throughout the world? Is this somehow connected to your search for Mira? I've dealt with Hermaeus Mora before. I've read the Agma Infinium. Have you? The actual Agma Infinium? That's it. I've searched for it myself for many years without success. Well then, you should know better than anyone that Hermaeus Mora is not to be trifled with. But he is subtler than most of the other Daedric princes, as you would expect of the Prince of Knowledge and Fate. You seem to have escaped the fate of many who find themselves ensnared forever by the law of his secrets. Or perhaps not. I found a black book. I need to find more. Found one? Yes. And you read it too, didn't you? Don't try to deny it. You've got the look. I can see it now. Dangerous knowledge is still knowledge and therefore useful. Usually turns out to be the most useful in my experience. I have to know why Mirak knows if I want to stop him. Sorry, I misspoke. I have to know what Mirak knows if I want to stop him. Now that is a dangerous path indeed. Hermaeus Mora gives nothing away for free. You may end up like Mirak, of course. Two power mad dragonborn. 
It could be very interesting. That's what I was saying. Do you know where I can find another black book? Oh, yes. They're not hard to locate once you know how to look for them. I have one here that I've been using to locate more. You have a black book? Yes, I haven't been idle while this fascinating madness engulfed the Solstein. But my book isn't what you're looking for. I'm quite sure it is unconnected with this Mirak. But I do know where to find a black book that can help you. Why won't the book you have here help me? Oh, it is clearly not associated with the same power that has overtaken the island. And I'm not talking about Hermaeus Mora. These black books are all his, of course. No, what you're looking for is a specific book, presumably because Mirak's power derives from it. So you know where to find this black book, the one connected with Mirak? Yes, I do. I haven't been able to get it, though. But maybe together we can unlock the secrets the Dwemer left behind. Just tell me where the book is, and I'll go get it. I'm afraid it isn't that simple. If it was, I would have the book already. It seems the ancient Dwemer discovered this book and took it to study. I found their reading room in the ruins of Nachardak. The book is there, but it's sealed in a protective case, which I wasn't able to open. But perhaps the two of us, together, will be able to get at the book. To Nachardak, then. Follow me. Okay. And I remember this takes an eternity. An absolute eternity. And I love how it's like the same. Yes. I like that animation. Um, so. Yes. I think we've already been to Nachardak, right? If we get out of this. Nachardak is probably... Oh, God, no. Oh, God, no. Do we activate... Where was the... Was it here? No, that's the Skull Village. Um... Oh, Falbathars is what we activated. That's right. Okay, so I believe the Chardak is located somewhere. Aha, yes, right over there. So, yeah, we have to walk all the way. And I believe, um, what's his name? Neloth does not wait for you, or he does wait for you. I think you literally had to travel with him all along the coast. And it takes forever because NPCs do not run. So, for the remainder of this episode, we're going to go ahead and explore, uh, Nelos little crevice here and see if he has anything of interest, which, spoiler alert, he does indeed. He has Death Brand, which I believe we've already read. Ooh, but, yeah, I think we have a miscellaneous quest for this. But also, he has Azadal's Descent, which I don't know if this is going to give us anything. And you guys can pause the screen if you would like to read this book. It is important, and it does directly deal with something that we'll find in due time. Okay, is this going to give us anything? Yes, investigate Colbjorn Barrow. Yes, indeed. So that's interesting. They give us the two sort of quest books uh, right in Neloth's study. Neloth. Neloth, Neloth. Nerevar at Red Mountain. Interesting. So the Nerevar uh, was the player character in the Elder Scrolls III uh, Morrowind, also called the Nerevarine. And Red Mountain is, of course, the mountain that we've been seeing. Um, I'm going to go... Ooh, Canis Root. That's not the same thing. I always get that one confused with the special uh, alchemy ingredient you get from the uh, um, Dark Brotherhood quest. Okay, he's got various scrolls, some interesting books. Let's see. Scroll of Ice Spike, Scroll of Ray Zombie. And we've got an interesting door here that requires a key. And you can see there's some sort of interesting looking table that we haven't seen before. We've seen the Arcane Enchanter over there, and we've seen the alchemy table, which I'm sure he's got one in here somewhere, but that particular table we have not seen just yet. We will see eventually, but uh, we need a key right now, obviously. What was that? Confessions of a Dunmer Skumer, Skuma Eater. Uh, these are probably new books. The Death Brand and the Azadal book are, of course, new, but I would imagine they added a bunch of other books for this particular DLC. The House of Troubles. None of these are valued at a high value, so they're not going to give us any skills. Okay, let's move over here. There's another arcane enchanter. I guess we should use that for a second and see if there's anything that we can disenchant. Wow, he's got like at least three arcane enchanters in this one place alone. Still the notch pickaxe, which of course we're not getting rid of. The enchantment wouldn't even really help us out anyways. 
Although I believe someone at one point told me to disenchant it because it would be so OP, and I don't know if they were joking or not, because, uh, yeah, I greatly value unique items. I don't want to get rid of them. And he's got some storage, and that's about it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to end this episode here. In the next one, we will, of course, follow along with Neloth to Nacharkdak? Yes, and see if we can't find another black book, which are really awesome. The black books are amazing, and we'll utilize them uh, very soon, and you can see exactly why they're amazing. Thanks for watching this episode, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you're watching this and not subscribed, subscribe! You'll see more, and it's free, of course. And also, liking the video greatly helps me out. And if you want to go the extra mile, check out the Patreon. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.